Today's lesson is Michelle Wu laying the foundation for change. Hi, everybody. My name is Roger, and my name is Helen. And today we're going to continue talking about Michelle Wu, and she's laying the foundation for change. She was recently sworn in as the mayor of Boston, and she's made history because she's the first person of color to ever be the mayor of Boston. Right, and even though she's in politics right now, and she holds a very important position because Boston is an important city, like Chicago and New York and Los Angeles. So to be a mayor of one of these cities is a position of power. And even though she has this position of power, we learned that she actually didn't want to go into politics. That wasn't her desire. That wasn't her goal. Indeed, in fact,、uh, she was studying economics at Harvard, and then her sister called her and urged her to come back because their mother was having some mental problems. So she came back to Chicago, opened up a tea shop. It didn't really work out, but still, that sort of started to change the trajectory of her life. So let's find out what happened next in her life. Let's listen to the first part of our lesson now, and we'll be right back to discuss it. After closing the tea shop, Wu moved back to Boston to attend Harvard Law School, taking her family with her. As a student, Wu found a mentor in Elizabeth Warren, whom she studied contract law under. When Warren ran for senator in 2012, Wu helped with the campaign, volunteering at first and then working full time as its constituency director. Afterward, Wu announced that she was planning to run for Boston City Council in 2013. She was elected the following year. Hello, everyone. The first part we saw the noun mentor, means teacher or teacher. Like a good mentor may have a huge impact on your life. A good mentor may have a huge impact on your life. A good mentor may have a huge impact on your life. A good mentor may have a huge impact on your life. A good mentor may Katie's boss mentored her on several projects until she felt confident enough to work on her own. Katie 的主管指导她几项专案，直到她有自信独立工作。So after closing the tea shop. Wu moved back to Boston to attend Harvard Law School, taking her family with her. So we saw that she had to go back to Chicago to act as caregiver to her mother because her mother wasn't able to care for herself any longer. So she had to act as the caregiver of her mother. She went back, but then after opening the tea shop, she closed it and decided to move with her mother, her family, back to Boston, probably because she felt. Felt that Boston had more offered more opportunities for her career, so in Boston she decided to attend Harvard Law School. So she went back to Harvard to study law. And as a student at Harvard, Wu found a mentor in Elizabeth Warren, whom she studied contract law under. So Elizabeth Warren is a famous politician from Massachusetts. She ran for president before she was not nominated, of course, but still she's very influential. And Elizabeth Warren was her mentor or mentor. You can pronounce it either way. A mentor is a person who guides you. They advise you. They tell you what to do because. They have more experience. Maybe all of us have a mentor in one way or another. Maybe we consider our parents our mentors. Yes, mentors are important for a person's success because you can go to school, you can read books, but in the end, you need someone who has experience in the area that you want to get into to guide you, to lead you, to tell you, you know, what to avoid and what to do. So here, Elizabeth Warren was Michelle Wu's mentor. Elizabeth Warren was someone whom Michelle Wu studied contract law under. So when you study under someone, under a professor, it means that that person is the one who reads all your papers, maybe. 
guides you in selecting courses and then writes recommendation letters for you if you wanted to go on and find a job. So when you study under someone, you're actually studying all of the things that that person specializes in. Exactly. So if you studied under a certain professor, you could say, "I studied under Professor Ashcroft at university and learned a lot from him." In this particular case, Michelle Wu studied contract law under Elizabeth Warren. Elizabeth Warren taught her all about contract law, and when Warren ran for senator in 2012, Wu helped with the campaign. So later on, Elizabeth Warren ran for senator. If you want to become a politician, if you want to be elected to a certain political office, you will run for that office. You can run for senator, you can run for congressman, or you can run for president. Yes, and here Warren ran for senator in 2012. A senator is someone who is a member of the Senate, which is the branch of government in the United States that's in charge of making laws. So she ran for senator in 2012. And Wu helped with the campaign. A campaign refers to the things that a politician must say and do in order to win an election. Politicians often need to raise money for their campaigns because the campaign may include TV ads, billboards, and flyers, and volunteers. So places where they need to take phone calls. So a political campaign can cost a lot of money. And she helped with the campaign. She helped out. She volunteered at first, which means she worked for free, and then she was working full time as its constituency director. So here she got a full time job, and her position was constituency director. So afterward, Wu announced that she was planning to run for Boston City Council in 2013. She was elected the following year. So that's a quick rise there. So she announced that she was planning to run for Boston. City City Council. Hey, I like politics. I think I'm going to be a member of the City Council. I'm going to run for office. So she ran a political campaign, and she was elected in 2014. Congratulations. Okay, that brings us to the end of the first part. Let's continue to talk about the political career of Michelle Wu. Wu has credited her family's struggles, including her mother's mental health crisis. And her own efforts to start a small business, with propelling her into politics, considered by many to be a progressive, Wu has repeatedly pushed for policies that would rein in big business and benefit ordinary citizens. She hopes to ensure free public transportation, affordable childcare, and universal pre-K education during her time as mayor. She also plans to fight poverty and bridge the racial wealth gap. Second part, we see the phrase "credit somebody or something with" noun or adjective ing. We add a little bit to the meaning of someone or something. For example, Charles credited Stephanie with making the party a success. Charles credited the party's success with making the party a success. Or Thomas credited his success to his parents' teaching. 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 Attribute something to somebody or something. Attribute, a t t r i b u t e. Attribute something to somebody or something. 只把点点点归因于某人事物。像是 the team attributed their win to their star player who scored several goals. 这个球队把胜利归因于他们的明星球员。他进了好多球。也可以说。The spread of the disease was attributed to bacteria found in the town's drinking water. 该疾病的蔓延被归咎于镇内饮用水中所发现的细菌。接下来我们看到单字 propel。这个字是动词，指驱策、推动。我们常用 propel somebody into 或是 to 加名词表示驱使或是推动某人。点点点。例如。The win propelled the team into first place in their league. 这场获胜促使这一队成为该联盟中的第一名。或是 ，the successful independent film propelled the young director to fame. 这部成功的独立电影促使那位年轻导演成名。最后，我们看到形容词 affordable， 
，只使多数人负担得起的，或是价格合理的。字尾 a b l e 表示能点点点的，或是可以点点点的。我们可以说 ，We found an affordable home in a good neighborhood. 我们在一个优良社区找到一间价格实惠的住宅。或是 Kevin couldn't afford the car he originally wanted, so he bought a more affordable model. Kevin 买不起原本想要的那部车，所以他买了较平价的车款。另外，补充两个以 A B L E 为字尾的形容词。第一个是 reliable, R E L I A B L E, reliable. 意思是可信赖的或是可靠的，像是 Debbie loves children and she's a reliable babysitter. Debbie 喜爱小孩，而且她是个可以信赖的临时保姆。又或者说 ，This airline company isn't reliable since its flights are often delayed. 这家航空公司不可靠，因为航班常常延误。第二个是 respectable, R E S P E C T A B L E. Respectable, 指值得尊敬的。我们可以说 ，The politician leads an honest and respectable life. 那位政治人物过着诚实可敬的生活。或者 ，Patty is a respectable person. She would never lie. Patty 是一位值得尊敬的人，她从不撒谎。Now Wu has credited her family's struggles, including her mother's mental health crisis and her own efforts to start a small business, with propelling her into politics. So she mentions that certain problems in her life were responsible for making her decide to have a career in politics. And here, the phrase that is used is. To credit with now, when you credit somebody or something with something else, you're saying that you believe that that person or that thing is responsible for your particular achievement or success. So I could also say I credit my brother with helping me pass the exam, meaning I believe that my brother was the one who helped me pass the exam. And here Wu is saying that her family struggles, including. Her mother's mental health issues and her own efforts to start a business were what helped her become successful in politics. So basically, she says that these are the reasons why she decided to enter politics and not continue with economics. So indeed, she probably had some problems with her mother taking care of her. She probably thought, "Hey, why isn't there some kind of national health that can help、uh, my mother with these mental health problems? And why is it so difficult to start a small business in uh, these uh, current times here?" So she thought, "Hmm, something needs to change in the government. So I'm going to become a politician myself." So she credits the family struggles and her efforts to start a small business with propelling her into politics. And here we've got the verb to propel, which means to help move something forward, to drive or to push something to make it move in a certain direction. Like on a plane, you have a propeller which can move the plane through the air. Of course, nowadays most planes are propelled by jet engines, but a propeller is the spinning thing. It looks kind of like. A fan, but in this particular case, we're talking about these things encouraging her or propelling her into politics. And considered by many to be a progressive, Wu has repeatedly pushed for policies that would rein in big business and benefit ordinary citizens. So, someone who is a progressive is a person who supports social and political change that can make a system fair for everyone. So that is the meaning when somebody is a progressive. When a politician is a progressive, progressives are usually liberals as opposed to conservatives. So Wu is a progressive, and she has repeatedly pushed for policies that would rein in big business. To rein in means to limit or control something that has become too powerful or too big or that's been happening for too long, and. According to Wu, these big businesses must be reined in, must be stopped, or they must be controlled because they are responsible or partly responsible for the inequality that ordinary citizens experience.
、Mm-hmm. So she wants to rain in big business here. Rain is not R A I N. Rain, water falling from the sky. It's R E I N. Rain, and as a noun, and in the plural form of the noun, that refers to the little ropes, the little pieces of leather that you use to control a horse. Those are the reins. So if you rein something in, you try to control big business. You don't let them make too much money and control all of the society. And you want all that money not to go in those rich people's pockets, but to come out and help ordinary citizens who have problems. And she hopes to ensure free public transportation, affordable childcare, and universal pre-K education during her time as mayor. So these are some of her campaign promises. She wants to guarantee or to ensure free public transportation to be able to get on the bus or to get into the subway there and go to wherever you. Want without having to pay. That's right. So here, the word "ensure" specifically means to make certain that something is done or that something will happen. For instance, in Taiwan, the national health insurance system ensures that everyone gets quality health care, regardless of how much money they have. But Michelle Wu wants to ensure free public transportation and affordable childcare. So affordable means not expensive. Something that is affordable is at a price that normal people, ordinary people, can afford. And childcare in America is indeed very expensive. If you can't afford it, then it means you have to stay home and you can't look for a job. You have to take care of your children. So she wants to make childcare affordable and universal pre-K. Education. Now, first of all, pre-K refers to pre-kindergarten. Kindergarten is、uh, school, the class that is for children, usually of the ages of five or six. So it's really the first year of education. So that's kindergarten. Pre-K or pre-kindergarten would refer to nursery school or school or education that is for children under the ages of five or six. Indeed, and、uh, she's made these promises. For her time as mayor, she hopes these things can happen for sure. She also plans to fight poverty and bridge the racial wealth gap. So there is a gap, a space between rich people and poor people, and she wants to bridge that gap. She wants to bring these two closer together so that there's not such a big difference between the two. And before we move on to the third part, we should talk about the word universal here. It's not referring to everything in the universe, which is billions of light years across. We're just talking about for everybody in society. She wants universal pre-K education, no matter who you are or how much money you have. Okay, that brings us to the end of the second part of our lesson for today. Let's move on now to the third part and wrap things up. Despite having ambitious goals, Wu is refreshingly down to earth about how to accomplish them. City government is special," she said after being sworn into office. "We are the level closest to the people, so we must do the big and the small. Every streetlight, every pothole, every park and classroom lays the foundation for greater change." Despite having ambitious goals, Wu is refreshingly down to earth about how to accomplish them. So, a bit about her character: she is very ambitious. Her goals are ambitious, which means that her goals require a lot of effort and time and energy to succeed. Wu is refreshingly down to earth. Somebody who is down to earth is very practical, very sensible, not too complicated or sophisticated, and that is refreshing. It's refreshing because perhaps many politicians aren't very down to earth. Maybe they make promises that they can't keep, or they say grand things that ordinary people don't understand. So she is refreshingly down to earth, even though her goals are ambitious, and、uh, she is down to earth about how she wants to accomplish these goals. Right. She lets people know exactly what she's thinking, and if you accomplish something, you are successful with that thing. You have a plan for. 
for it, and you succeed. You accomplish your goal. You reach your goal. And city government is special, she said, after being sworn into office. So that's refreshing. Here, most people think of government as kind of being bad and corrupt, and the people there are just greedy and only interested in their own careers. But she's saying that city government actually is a good thing. It's special, and she said that when she was sworn into office, when she took the oath of office. Right, and she is talking specifically about city government because maybe people think, ah, city government isn't that important. It's more important to be the government of the state or of the country as a whole. But she says she explains we are the level closest to the people, so we must do the big and the small. Every streetlight, every pothole, every park and classroom lays the foundation for greater change. So what she is saying that city government, unlike higher government levels, is closer to the people, to what people want, to what kinds of things people are experiencing, the problems that they have. So the city government is most able to create changes. Right. So she's talking about all these little things: every streetlight, every pothole, every park, all those things. Things are part of larger society. They all lay the foundation for greater change, and we wish her the best of luck. Okay, that brings us to the end of the third part of our lesson for today. Let's listen now to our Chinese teacher. Hello, 同学，大家好，我是 Hanny。我们来看今天的文法重点。课文第三部分的第一句写道：“尽管雄心壮志，但吴米对于如何实现目标的踏实态度却令人耳目一新。”好，文中他用到单字 ambitious 来形容雄心壮志的、富有野心的、有抱负的。那它的名词是 ambition。我们要补充一下它的字首字根哦。看到 a m b 或是 a m b i 这个字首，它就。Around 就是周围或是环绕的意思，然后后面加上 i t 这个字根表示走。i o n 是名词字尾，嗯，环绕着走，在周围走是什么意思呢？其实这个字啊，在拉丁文原本的意思是四处游说以取得选票，我们就可以用四处走动来游说、争取他人支持自己的目标理想，用这样的画面去联想到 ambition， 它有抱负、野心、梦想的意思。好，另外文中他用到 down to earth， 中间有连字号，用这个复合形容词来形容是踏实的、脚踏实地的、务实的。它也可以形容是真诚的、朴实的意思。如果我们把连字号拿掉 ，down to earth， 字面意思是到地面上。那英文有一个用语叫做 "come down to earth"， 回到地面上，则表示说好像是从幻想中清醒过来，回到现实世界，回归实际的意思。尤其是指啊，在兴奋过后恢复冷静，然后开始脚踏实地的处理问题。有时候这个用语后面还会加上 with a bump 或是 with a bang 等等，更生动的描述，好像回到地面上会有落地这样砰的碰撞声，听起来是不是很有趣呢？好，那我们顺便补充几个跟 earth 有关的用语。好，第一个要补充的是 on earth， 它字面意思是地球上嘛。不过，它常常摆在 W 式疑问词的后面，用来加强语气，表达说究竟或是到底的那种语义，往往就带有那种惊讶、困惑、愤怒或是质疑等等的语气哦。例如 ，What on earth were you thinking？ 你当时到底在想什么啊？好，在我们看到第二个补充的是 Hell on earth， 这应该蛮好理解的。在地球上的这个地狱，就是人间炼狱嘛。好，用来比如说极度凄惨的处境或者是环境，就有如地狱一般。那如果是 heaven on earth， 则是人间天堂，用来比喻可能是非常宜人的地方，或者是很令人愉快的处境。第三个补充的用语叫做 move heaven and earth。其实这感觉就好像是你要使尽洪荒之力，让天地移动的感觉。那这个用语是用来表达尽其所能、尽最大努力，也就是 work very hard to do something 的意思。
。好，那么第四个补充的是 promise somebody the earth， 也可以把 the earth 换成 the moon 或是 the stars 等等。承诺给某人地球啊、月球、星星等等，这就是用来比喻说，向某人做出无法兑现的承诺，给予不切实际的承诺。例如 ，Many politicians promise the earth, but deliver little。许多政治人物啊，做出不切实际的承诺，几乎没有兑现，没拿出什么成果来。好，那么以上是今天重点整理，我们回顾今天的单词吧。Mentor。In his first year as an investment banker, Alex found a mentor in his boss, Senator. After years of working for the city council, Fred became a senator. Campaign. Running a successful advertising campaign is a lot of work. Progressive. She and her fellow progressives are pushing for tax reform. Ensure. We must work hard to ensure the survival of this species. Universal. Many countries provide their citizens with universal health care. Ambitious, writing and directing her own film was Ruby's most ambitious project yet. Accomplish, you can accomplish great things when you work hard. Discussion starter starts now. Here's our discussion starter for today. The question is, what do you think about the things Michelle Wu hopes to achieve as mayor? I think Michelle Wu's plan is to make Boston more livable for people because Boston can also be a very expensive city, and certain services and certain things may not be accessible to a lot of people. And I think she wants to create more equality and make it a fair city. Well, if we don't learn from our mistakes, then we're going to fail. We're not going to succeed if we don't look at all the small things like traffic lights and potholes and problems of the poor and stuff like that, and、uh, expensive transportation. So, for these reasons, I think Michelle Wu's plan to start from the basics and be laid back is a good idea. Well, everyone, today's article has come to an end, and I sure hope you enjoyed reading along with us. I am Roger. I'm Helen. See, See you, you next time. time.